Sure do. All right. Okay, well, let's thank you both of you for being here. We greatly appreciate your expertise and um, it's been wonderful working with Jen and Chrissy, so. <laughs> So we were coming in to do the levels of care. Yes. Just to kind of give an overview. I did hand out the brochure and it's more for our services, but we do, we do specialize also in appropriate living environments. So in order to just kind of go over that, I was going to just give a brief update on like a kind of an overview of acute versus post-acute. So for those of you that don't understand that, acute would be an inpatient stay and it can be an inpatient and or an observation stay. Um, that status could change the outcome <laughs> of your discharge plans, yeah, well, depending on what you are. Yeah, wife be driving. Yeah. <laughs> could, change the dis could change your discharge plans. And then those discharge plans can range anywhere from just going home, needing some skilled, um, skilled nursing facility support, inpatient rehab. And those two, again, also have separate criteria. So again, depending on your acute stay, we'll transition into a post-acute stay. And if you need additional rehab within, that's a little bit more intense than outpatient therapy, we would send, they would send, the hospital would send you to a skilled facility. Those are short-term stays. They tend to not be long-term. They are covered by insurance, typically. Um, if you can sustain three hours or more of rehab a day, you would go into inpatient rehab. Um, it would be a combination of PT, OT, and speech. Correct. It doesn't so, have to be three hours of physical therapy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any combination of three hours, but you do have to, they will do a PNR consult, which is a physical medicine consult at the hospital to determine if you can handle that amount of therapy. Um, and then if you're going home, you can always like go home and we say home kind of very loosely because some people's homes can be an independent living facility, some can be an assisted living facility, that's also known as a personal care home. Some homes are skilled facilities. Um, and then once we're out of the community, and that's kind of where we come in, where we help navigate. So those people that are in their homes or in independent living, in assisted living or in skilled, We've been contacted to come in and kind of help navigate what level of care they could need moving forward. So um, we come in and we'll do an assessment and we assess the client, we assess them me uh, medically, we assess them cognitively, we assess their home environment and kind of just come up with a care plan. We, uh, I'm a registered nurse by trade, Jen's a speech pathologist by trade, but we have been doing case management. I've been doing it for 19 years. So the majority of my career has been spent transitioning people throughout the continuum. So it's going to be based on what your needs are. So the least invasive is independent living or after you leave, after you leave home will be independent living. And those are facilities, apartments, those type of things that are ideal for seniors, single level living, meals presented, like meals are, off, meals are offered housekeeping, laundry, those type of things. They can be rather pricey. They are all private pay. There's not an independent living out there that'll accept insurance. Um, they will work with some long-term care policies. So some people who have long-term care insurance policies in place, they will help cover independent livings, assisted livings, and maybe even skilled, depending on what the policy reads. Every policy is different. So don't think your neighbor has a policy that covers everything, that your policy is going to cover everything because they do not. Um, and then if you decide that you need additional care from independent living, you can get additional private paid care in your home, which could be anywhere from a live-in to a couple hours a week. They can come in and it just, it would just depend on your finances and your needs and what we could all come up with in the community. Once you've reached a part where you need a little bit more help, if you need to go beyond the independent living, you're gonna to go to assisted living or personal care home, depending on how you wanna term that, um, and or memory care. Big difference between assisted personal care and memory care is they're typically a lock unit for those that have a longer risk. Um, those are all facilities that are again, private pay, 
that will accept some long-term care policies, but they are not covered by insurances. Um, they are not paid by Medicaid or anything like that, but they are facilities that have activities, they help with medications, they do meals, all your laundry, all um, housekeeping, um, and they're there as to genuinely help you. Each personal care home and assisted living does have a level of care assessment, so they'll have tiers, which will also be assigned an amount and a, a financial amount, so the more you need, unfortunately, the more you'll pay. And then when you move beyond that need for, again, personal care assisted, you can get some, some facilities will allow you to have some private duty within those facilities as well. They, they welcome some outside agencies. Others are very standoffish because of liability. <laughs> um, so it just has to depend on the facility. And every facility has different requirements. Some facilities don't allow insulin and oxygen. And as soon as you need either one of those, you've got to go to skill. Some facilities allow those. Um, it, it's just crazy how different they are. Um, and then within that kind of realm with all of those, they have those, those um, communities that are called continued care communities. And those are the companies or corporations, so to speak, that have everything under one umbrella. So they have independent, assisted, and skill all in one umbrella. So you, you move within the continuum as you need to, but you stay under the same company. Um, sometimes it's the same neighborhoods. Sometimes it's different buildings. Sometimes it's just down the hall. <laughs> and other times you have to move 20 miles away to another neighboring facility for them. So again, it just depends on what you're truly looking for. And with those continuum of cares, they're usually a large lump sum of buy, like a buy-in. <laughs> There's a buy-in up front where you would pay a large amount of money, anywhere from I've seen from 125,000 to 500,000. Um, I've also, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. It's a lot of money. Yeah. But part of the benefit is that, like, say you start off in assisted living and you need skill. Even though the cost of your care is going up, they keep you at that same level with maybe like a cost of living increase. Yeah, what, a, the, what an apt example was, but there's El Amber Village. Yes. And uh, Molly Malone, she was a Greco, and they were, Daddy was, she spent, she was spending $12,000 a month. It's expensive. So. For that private apartment. And, yeah. and the son and his daughter in law didn't want her coming back. So I guess they are Joe worth about two million, a million over a million within a year. It was gone. Yeah, and no, personal care homes and assisted living is very expensive. They vary. Um, I've, got, I've had facilities that will work with individuals on um, Social Security and they'll kind of double up in a room that technically was for one and try to go up what they make, what they bring in from Social Security. Um, where in a, a typical double room that you would see today, they would put four people and they'd put four people in one room that was on, they were all four on social security and they'll work with them on that. Um, and then you have some of the other ones that are big and beautiful and gorgeous, but they start at seven, $8,000 a month. And that's without your level of care assessment. So it's a good idea plan ahead um, for all of these expenses. Yeah, but that's not hard with it. Like I had his wife at Asensia in Plumbora. It was the money was gone. He put his remote keys and he said, I got a grand caravan out in your lot. He said, I'll go home and get the title. We said I I got nothing else in me. He, yeah, said, it's he said to you he said your lawyers beat me here. He said our lawyers coming. He said she'd stay here. No, it's expensive, so it's good to plan ahead. Um, make sure you look into did, all coverage. She did, make she make sure you look into all coverage. Apartment. She lived with another woman. Yeah. But they had like a super good care. But that's why you want to make sure you look into your coverage, look into long term care, see if you have it, and make sure you're pulling from all those resources before you pull from your own well, assets. And yeah, I am saying that's something else we can help too with. When my mom three spot, we walk out. Uh, Linda and Bobby finally got her at Boss Chapel 40 in that mm -hmm. last week. Uh, that uh, that uh, hospice kicked in from, uh, yeah. uh, from uh, Will, I mean, from, uh, I know where it is. Uh, but we can help to do that. Where Schultz, the other Schultz board is. 
We can help get some of those Wexford. entitlements, like if someone has VA they benefits are, or are. you know other other things that we can pull money from too, and looking at that long term. Yeah, so we'll review policies or review benefits. We will make every phone call known to mankind <laughs> to find out what kind of coverage we can get or what kind of community services that we can get. Um, because once you move out of those that level, as far as assisted living, personal care, memory care, you're going up to skilled care. Um, skilled, again, private pay covers it. Long-term care covers some of them. But most of the time, um, most people go into a skilled facility short-term after a hospital stay. And then once you've got, once you've declined enough that you require a skilled facility long term, it is going to be private pay. It is going to be um, covered by some long term care insurances. But then you're also going to have the opportunity to possibly apply for Medicaid to have Medicaid cover your skilled stay. Problem with that is, is you have to spend out all of your assets in order to qualify. So. If you have a home, if you have a savings account, if you have anything that is not secured in a trust, you have to spend down all your assets. And I believe it's around 20,000. So if you have 100,000 in your savings, you're gonna be required to spend 80,000 on your care before you can apply for Medicaid. That actually, I think I was lucky since George, my dad was a coal miner, but he was a certified electrician, uh, Medicare, jumped ahead in front of the building that she had the United Mine Workers for the funds paid. Yeah. I never got a bill. If I got a bill, it was taken care of. Right, and there's some people that just have little rays of sunshine like that. <laughs> but I can tell you the majority of she people do not. She was up that, uh, that Seneca and Niagara, and they, they wouldn't, United Mine Workers wouldn't touch it. Medicare said she's been there 100 days. She can walk 70 feet. I told Linda she can't get out of the wheelchair. Then we then then we had to go up to uh Sorber and it was about four blocks from Jack's Ford. And that woman said Jack and Jill, that was a, a, a junkie motel on Route 66 going to Arizona, California was better than that. Can I ask a long-term care or long-term coverage? Yes. Is that something you have to have purchased a certain amount of time before you need it? Like you just have to have it. It's like a it's like almost like a life insurance policy. Okay. You can buy it last week. Okay. There, there's an elimination period um, mm -hmm. before you can start receiving benefits. So okay. each one's different. I've seen 30 days, 60, and 90. Um, so it just depends on that specific policy. Okay. Um, but from what I understood also, most, some of those policies will back pay, like no back reimburse. Okay. So from the date that you file a claim. So if you file a claim today and you've been in assisted living for three months, that they'll go back to your admission. Okay. Some mm -hmm. make you wait the whole elimination period before they start reimbursing. Okay. And from what I've seen too, they're much cheaper to buy into the younger you are. Yeah. Like so it's like buy life insurance now versus when you try to buy it when you're 70. Mm -hmm. It's they're, a lot. They're incredibly expensive, which is why people don't do them nowadays. They're almost mm -hmm. as much as a mortgage. Um, each month they can be yeah, $1,200 a month. Oh. Um, and I've heard from a lot of a lot of insurance companies have steered away from them mm -hmm. and aren't even offering long-term care policies mm -hmm. anymore. So what they're doing is there's there's some type, and I, I'm not well versed in this, but there's it's essentially a life insurance policy with a kind of like a cash option for long-term care. Uh -huh. So there's different caveats to those that you can look into mm -hmm. um, and see if you could get it a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most of the life the long-term care policies that we've seen, people wrote them 25, 30 years ago. Um, and they're still a struggle to get the payout. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so well, they used to write lifetime funds. My father's older sister, my Aunt Agnes, and my Uncle Hody, Joe Thomas died. But he worked down below in Washington. He was a floor <coughs> boss in the machine shop. So they bought like an extra, they bought an extra insurance and one of them went to the nursing home. Then they couldn't find it in the house. Then within 30 days, my cousin Olivia had to start paying can't get her social security, I guess she had power. And then within the month she died, but, uh, they had it. It was supposed to have been like a hundred thousand or something. They we're gonna listen, we're gonna ask there was, questions. There was no proof that they had it. Yeah, they were paid on that one. So I know that was a very quick overview. 
And I didn't go into detail as far as requirements for each level of care because it is very specific to each individual. Um, and we do this on a daily basis where we go in and help individuals try to decipher which level of care they need to go into. Um, if their ideal goal is to stay home, we do everything we can to keep them home. If they want to transition, we do everything to help them do that safely. Uh, I'm working with a family in New York right now to move his parents down to Pittsburgh, so they're closer. So we're working throughout that entire process. Do we want to go independent? Do we want to go assisted? And what that looks like. So um, does anybody have any specific questions that would be helpful for them directly? Well, ma'am, I'm with them. I know all these <laughs> I'm spending time with more, more, more money with Chrissy doing exercises. I've been here. They, they thought I was the best best guy on the property. To, uh, yeah, you're, you're I'm right, 68 and I walk with the rest of them. got old time. So you don't get to ask any questions until tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might as well sit over here in the chair and she will talk to her. But... <laughs> This is just like me coming to see her twice in one week. That's all. I knew you wouldn't know. In New Canada Valley, I, was, I told Chris you can't wear shorts. And stuff. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys do and how you're different than a lot of the stuff that's out there? So, we are a geriatric care management company. So, we come in and we help you navigate difficult choices. Basically, the healthcare maze, as I like to call it, is, is kind of cheesy, but we help you navigate your care from beginning to end as far as whether you're in, going in and out of hospital, you need specialists, you need doctors, different doctors who can pull your care together. So basically, we come in as that center point to be the center of your care coordinator. Um, and we help you with as far as your medical, um, your medical needs, your home needs, Maintenance. We've done landscaping. We have done us personally. No, we don't find We find contractors for yeah. rain, like you name it. We've done. We've pretty much done we it. Did that all for me. Same, did same. that all for me. Um, and we're just we're here to help. We're here to help with those difficult conversations, those difficult needs. Um, we're honest. We are honest about what you need. We are not going to sugarcoat it. We might be we might be nice about it, <laughs> but we're going to be honest. Like you hit it, you hit a level that you need X, Y, and Z. But how do you want to do that? So one person may want to that added security of a facility, and they want to be there. The other person, I don't care what it takes. I'm staying home. This is where I'm staying, and this is where I'm going to die. Um, so we do everything we can to honor somebody's wishes. Um, if you look at the little brochure that I handed out. And I'll leave some for you, but just kind of to go over. Um, we like to say that if you have any of these concerns, which is on the one side of the page, if those, if any of those questions resonate with you, um, such things as my loved one is not safe living in their home alone, what can I do? So we've gone into homes. We do we we visit these homes at least weekly. We have support staff of our own that can come in and do some either respite for caregivers or genuine ADL care for somebody. Um, and then we work with outside agencies and the community to try to figure out what else we can pull in to obviously help financially. Um, the doctor nurse caregiver told my parent um, can no longer live at home. Well, yes, they can. <laughs> okay. I, I hate to break that. Um, the doctors will say that. Um, nurses will say that. They will say this, your mom can no longer live at home. She can but she's going to need X, Y, and Z. So I think that's where everybody panics. Like my doctor said, I have to move my mom. Okay, but you also need to realize it's also a resource barrier. So depending on what your resources are, anybody can stay home. Anybody can stay home and die if that's what their wishes are. Um, I don't understand all the costs and options of all the alternative living arrangements. It's kind of what we went through. I am currently doing all the legwork for a family. I'm finding out every single option, every single amenity, square footage of rooms, apartments, you name it, what their long-term care policy will cover, what they're gonna to have to cover privately. I'm working with their financial advisor to also try to just pull it all together to put everybody on budget. Um, so we go that far as to, you know, somebody who's home alone, who doesn't really have that, but they have maybe family from a distance. We work with them as far as we'll take them on the tours. We will go and look at other facilities and if they're just not having it, 
<laughs> which happens often, um, we'll figure out what we can do to bring into the home so they can stay there. Um, the healthcare system is overwhelming to navigate. Amen. Um, we don't know all the answers. We don't pretend to know all the answers, but we do know where to start. And I think that's the big thing. So we know where to start. We know what to, whose buttons to push. I've been in Pittsburgh my entire life. I have worked my entire career in Pittsburgh, and I have been doing case management in Pittsburgh. Um, so I have dealt with the insurance side, I have dealt with the acute side, I have dealt with the post-acute side, and I know where to push the buttons. Um, and then our team, they're amazing. We, we pretty much have north and south covered as far as where the recommendations are, the doctors are. And again, not saying we know it at all, but we will do everything we can to figure it out for you. Um, my loved one gets worse with each hospital stay. Yep. That's it. That's it's that's tried and true, unfortunately. So with each hospital stay, you see a decline, and then they may go to a skilled facility for a short stint, not really get rehab, and then go back to their home, depending on which level it is. And then within a couple of weeks, they've fallen again, and the cycle just keeps. And then we're getting with every admission, they get worse. And that's just a natural disease process with some. Um, sometimes it's just poor healthcare management at home. It's it's poor compliance on their part. And it might not be the fact that they're being ordinary, as I like to say, but they're just, they don't know. They, are, they just don't know what they should be doing to change those things. And we're here to help with that as well. My loved one has memory problems and I need help. Again, this would help guide as far as what they need in the home to keep safe or where they need to transition to. I live a good distance away from my parents and need someone to oversee their care. We get this one a lot. This is probably, <laughs> this is probably our primary one. Yeah. I mean, the majority of our clients, all of their the kids, kids live the somewhere same. else. And the parents wanted to stay here in Pittsburgh, didn't want to go anywhere. So they brought us in to, to help manage their care, report back to them, go to doctor's appointments, help advocate for them. So we're their local boots on the ground person. Mm -hmm. We're their son and daughter when they can't. Yeah. <laughs> so I tell them that. I'm like, I, I get to be that pesky nurse, and we all know that if you have a nurse in the family, you call them for everything. You have a nurse that, that goes to the hospital, everybody's eyes roll, because they know I'm going to ask questions. They know I'm going to poke the bear. I'm going to say, why isn't this being done? What is this? Let me see this. Who are you? What are you doing? She's telling the lady, she's telling you correct, because I'll be sick, and after my mother, Teresa, died, and uh, Christy came back, and Jen, and she replaced uh, Christy, and she had to leave because her family all in all, and her mother's in bad health. Her father had a failure heart valve, and it was a lot of nights. They were going to have a Christmas party the week of Christmas before you started. Oh. And Bobby hires you. She gets donuts down. She's down at Allegheny General for almost till morning, eating donuts and drinking coffee. <laughs> Who and is? And they're, and Me? No, oh. Chrissy. Oh, Chrissy. Okay. Chrissy. I'm not like... Chrissy K. K. And then uh, um, they were supposed to have a uh, Bobby set up a party, Christmas party. She never got there. And I wonder where, where you at? I'm in a hospital. A woman in uh, Oakland had a heart attack or something. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that is. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, we helped Dean as well. Um, so, that's usually what happens. A lot of the time, it's the parents that they're not they're not leaving their homes. And whether you live in, whether the kids live in Pittsburgh or they don't live in Pittsburgh, you're, you're going to struggle getting your, your elders out of where they've been for four years. Well, um, the next one is, is my family is having a difficult time agreeing on the best treatment for our parent. That's about 50% of our problems. <laughs> um, so what we do is we pull our brain together from the beginning. We go in and we do our initial assessment. We pull a and then we do a family conference. And we tell, we basically make sure we pull POAs in because there's a reason why they're the POA. There might be multiple. Um, some families choose to decide between medical and financial and, and some keep it all as one person. Um, when you split it, that can cause issues um, because Mary over here with the money and Bobby over here with the medical sometimes won't butt, will butt heads because Mary either doesn't want to spend the money that Bobby needs for her medical treatment and vice versa. Um, so I recommend with families, they choose one for both. Um, it just seems to be a little bit smoother. Some families do it well and they can, they can, they're able to make it work. Um, but we just, we help, we pull them together from the get go and, and get the answers up front and then just work through the problems because you're going to have one. 
Did you have a question? Uh, yes. Actually, my mother has Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and my father, they're both, they're both in our age. Okay. And my, my, my brothers and I were talking about this. Like my dad goes down for his uncle, but my dad is taking care of her. Okay. She's at home. And um, so my dad goes down with a problem. He has an issue here. He, he can't really take care of her anymore. Are there facilities that could like help him, him depending on what happens before? And hold on and watch her as well at the same time. So I need she could her. go to an assisted living under like respite services. So you don't have to stay permanently in an assisted living. So you she well, they'd could, be able to be together. Yes. Um, well, depending on what his care needs would right. do. So if he needed rehab or whatnot, if he needed to be in a skilled facility or a rehab facility, she Re couldn't go. I mean, yeah. She could potentially go to a skilled facility with him. I know it's a very big question. Yeah, so she could potentially go to a skilled facility with him as a private pay patient um, because you can't just, they won't let you kind of walk in on the street and all of a sudden be a patient. Um, could she do that? Yes. If he is rehabbed and whatnot and you could go to assisted living temporarily together um, just to give him some extra support, um, it would be hard. Um, but if he's one place, you'd probably have to put her somewhere else, is what I'm guessing. Unless you could find like one of those you facilities live, that has everything on your roof. You live around here? Yeah. Because uh, you could see about, they could help you see about getting her, your mom, maybe your dad, possibly at Fox Chapel. Cordia, that's right in Indiana, Taj. Yeah, it's uh, right there's that Amber place across the okay. <laughs> So they use, so they'll I'm take her respite, which is just short term. Um, but I think what would happen, even the ones that are all under one, it just it would just truly depend on the facility and what they would be willing to do. There's right. the, the one in Oakmont, uh, Presbyterian right. Senior right. there. Yeah. And a friend of mine, her mother was in the Alzheimer's unit and her father was same campus. Okay. In an apartment. Yeah. So they, they can, you can walk down and visit. And they would be yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you're you're talking short term in the event uh, just a yeah. rehab. Yeah. yeah. They can do that's a continuum care community. So you can you can separate and still be under the same on the same property. You're gonna have that's gonna be a little bit of a hurdle. Well, that's yeah. And he's um he's right now, I think. You, I mean, you could look into services to give him some caregiver respite, which would be having somebody come in if you and your brother can't cover yeah, it. <laughs> You're it right now? Yeah, or it's, he is, it's, it's up to him. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's the old, old, old Pittsburgh guy. Old my way of it going. <laughs> well, those, those ones tend to like me. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, that Fox Chapel, and when my mom was up there, she was on the blue side, and the, and the left side was the green side. So that was the side of the building. I only had one floor. She was well taken care of. She even had hospice because my mom didn't hear it, but she needed hearing aids and she had cataracts. But, uh, they fed her good. Uh, they had her where Bobby lived. That was uh, 40 uh, uh, Rebecca. But there's actually a senior living apartment building right across. You can't walk from, you have to walk out in the street or drive. But that fella was living there. His wife, and the only thing there, they don't have no doctors and nurses in the we're facility. Not you know we're not paying you, right? Paying you. I think if Rebecca is completely if, if you called me on the phone today and asked me that same you question, should, my should. response would be is your dad's going to have to go and get his health care and his medical treatment needed. And your mom's probably going to have to go to an assisted under respite temporarily. They would not be together because of how quickly it would happen. Yeah, that's not how, yeah. So, what, so if you ran into that, we can help you. We call assisted living facilities and ask them if they can take your mom respite wise. If they have availability, they usually will help in a heartbeat. Um, sometimes it will take a couple days because they may want to assess her. So there's a process. Um, but that's my first inkling as what would have to happen just because of the time frame. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. People do deal with Yes, absolutely. And then if you talk to your dad, the best place, the best thing, <laughs> <least, laughs> forgive me his number. <laughs> I'll take it off of you. Uh, 
Um, but we tend to, we, it's no different than a lot of services that I would recommend. So when you're starting to decline, we, when we talk about palliative or hospice, getting in earlier before something like that is mm -hmm. what's valuable. So having your dad trust us before that happens is always a valuable asset because then he's not, when, when the tragedy happens or when, you know, the drama starts with yeah. declining, he feels more comfortable with us. And then it's not so much of us being, who's this new person trying to move my wife, trying to move me. He knows us already and it's more of a relief. So sometimes having us come in and we've done, we do this for a lot of clients where we're not seeing them routinely, but we went in and we did the assessment and then we're just kind of back here. We're just back here where you know we're already connected, we've already met, and we're a phone call away when something happens. Okay. No, no, that was a great question. Well, this lady, Dean. my wife's <laughs> well educated. She got two master's degrees. Who? Me, I do. I do. Oh, Thank you for that. Nursing. Thank but, you for uh, that. Between four and five o'clock. This woman has some kind of education. She's got grown children, husband, and she was taking her, her kids to ophthalmologist last year. She forgot where she was. Apparently, I should I didn't know we had, we didn't, we're not paying you for all of this. She got one uh, MRI of her brain and she wasn't satisfied. She don't have this. She's 46 years old. I am not. This woman on the news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back, Dean. <laughs> yeah, I can ask you what you're <laughs> You can ask anyway, my age. This woman was 46 right. years old, and she, they thought early oh, diagnosis, God. they thought she had uh, dementia at 46. She got all. Oh. Yeah, you can, you can. So, and so on Dean's two point. Time, two types of medical pills every day. You know, I think she says it's going to make her go. She's going to take photographs of everything she sees. So I want to live long enough to see my grandchildren. Uh, she's for so it's not anybody 70, 80, 90s. It affects people not even 50. I get what I just say. I'm not medical. I went to Duff's for a year, quit, worked in a warehouse. I worked 31 years for giant <laughs> yeah. So I, I look at everything you can. All I, all I understand is the sensors in the brain starts dying. So you, you the brain eventually looks like Swiss cheese. Oh. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to go over this real quick. All right. So just to finish up with those last couple of questions. Should my wife be driving? We help with that as well as far as getting we. We pulled in several geriatricians that we work with and then guide to those special testing for that. We do cognitive screening on all of our clients routinely just to give us kind of a heads up. And again, once we're in with somebody, we're also those trained clinicians that are picking up on things that the untrained eye is not picking up on. Um, we help with medication. So that's what that is. My, my father's not taking his pills. My mother's forgetfulness is concerning kind of all tied together. So if any of those questions resonate with you, then we just tell you to call us and I'll talk to you on the phone and then we come out for an assessment. We are private pay. Um, we do work with long-term care policies, long-term care insurances. Some of them have a care coordination um, rider attached to them that will cover our services. Um, so again, if you have a long-term care policy, we help you renew that to see if that is a benefit. So you, you cover the expenses and then seek reimbursement through those companies. Um, but our main services are listed on the right side of this. So again, we do uh, holistic care management. We do everything. <laughs> we do our mind, body, and soul, and all the way down to your landscaper and your contractors. We've done it all. Um, disease management. We are registered nurses. Hats in the plant. We can turn them all. I mean, we've done it all. Okay? When I tell you we've done it all, we have definitely done it all. Um, and yeah, um, healthcare advocacy, I, I would have to say, is our biggest. Um, that's what we're there for. We're just we're going to advocate. We're going to be that pesky, pesky clinician that's going to get the answers for you. And I, I've always laughed when a family member tells us, "Oh, they're not happy. You're coming." Good, <laughs> good, and that's fine. Like I, I love a challenge. And if they're not happy, I'm coming. If the facility's not happy, I'm coming. There's something wrong with it. Um, 
Medication management, we will do a full review of all medications because half the time a lot of people are taking over medicated. They're taking too many medications that are might be contraindicated, might be knocking, you know, basically canceling each other out. So we will do a review. And if we can't figure it out, it's not glaring to us. We then recommend a physician who can pull it all together for you and have you evaluated so we can get you on the right path. We talked about appropriate, appropriate living environment solutions and that's again, navigating whatever level of care and we do, we work with your finances. Um, we don't need to know your bank account. People get very, very worried about letting us know their finances. I don't wanna know it all. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what you need to tell me in order for me to help put us on a budget, put you on a budget and really help expand your finances to last longer. Um, Cognitive impairment support that goes right along with disease management, resource navigation. We will pull in whatever free thing we can find for you. So I understand you're paying for our services, but we do truly try to find stuff that, the, that you're, you're entitled to through the community. And then last, um, legal and financial support. Um, we, are, we are just starting out with um, POAs and guardianships. We will do long-term care policy reviews. Um, and then we do have professional relationships with elder law and trust attorneys. So if you know anybody, and I have told my family this, we just did it with my mom, anybody with assets should talk to an elder law attorney. Because if you think long-term care is in your future, which it more than likely would be for all of us, you want to protect your assets before, you, before you're forced to spend it all down to nothing. So I would recommend that highly. Any other questions? Yeah, there's a talking about elder care. There's uh, Jennifer Rose and I, and I work with that. And there's a, there's a free she plug right there. <laughs> <laughs> she's, so, one, I mean, she's one of the ones that we recommend. She's very good. But I, I just did it with my mom. And my mom's only 65. And I just took her and her house was paid off. So it is now in a trust. Mm -hmm. And after five years, it's safe. So by the time she hit 70, her assets are safe. So it's just things you need to think about. And even, even your parents and their age, like it's never too late to try to get it in line. He, I mean, even if he dies, like right now, somebody will be in the house five hours from now. I'm going to just make a phone call and then his, his body can take care of it. <laughs> That's good. And then they really took. He, he, he done the engineer, but he should have been. Yeah. <laughs> But you got to make sure the house is protected. Right, exactly. So that's why I said I just recommend it because a lot of people don't know that, mm -hmm. and then it becomes too late, and they're in that they're in that look back window, and things start to go pretty quick. Yeah, I had I had my mom and dad had we did that for me. Yeah. But I'm not married, and I had to have some place to live. <laughs> Well, we sure as heck hope so, right? Regardless of being married, you should have a place to live. It seems, so. yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions on there? Anybody's popped up with any? It's, it's sure really a shame. Covered. It's really a shame, like in Pittsburgh, and people are homeless. They're getting them tents that are supposed to be the best country in the world. Big brother, go help people when they're in trouble, wars. I don't see any. And there's okay. people living out in the streets. That was incredibly informative. Thank you very much. It answered questions for me, so I'm glad I was here. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. Um, we'll have some of your information here um, for anyone who's interested, and um, we actually we all we have your cards and everything on the desk. Probably so too. yeah, so we have your information, and even if we run out of cards, I know how to get in touch with them. So if you guys need. Um, or if anyone who watches this down the road, we have access to find you guys at Holistic Aging. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Really, really informative. So thank you. Thanks, Dean. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Would you define yourself as like a facilitator or?